All right. I am doing another live episode of the Spone Trained Personal Development Podcast. Uh, I'm here at home in Iowa. Uh, it's been a long winter and yesterday was 60 and sunny, so I'm definitely ready for the spring to come. Um, and I'm you know, going over some things, possible episodes for uh, today. And one that I've been working on and focusing on, on a lot lately is an idea that I think you're gonna like and it affects everything that we do. It is one of the core principles of NLP um, and it's pretty easy to understand. So it is the idea of perceptual filters. So how we see the world and more than anything, this affects our life, how we make decisions, how we see other people, how we respond, how our emotions come into effect uh, and that is what we call perceptual filters. I'm gonna talk about what they are, why we have them, uh, how they screw us up, how they help us, and then how to be more aware of them and to change them going forward. All right, so we're gonna talk about, yeah, how they create your reality, um, what creates those filters, so how those filters get there. You can think of them almost like, you've heard the term rose-colored glasses, right? It's like we put on a pair of glasses that changes how we see the world. Uh, and then we're going to talk about how to dissolve them. So welcome. I don't even know what episode we're on in the sixties. Now it's been, uh, almost, it's not even a year yet since I've started releasing these and we've got over 60 episodes. I hope you guys are enjoying them. I'm having a blast putting them out. Um, new episodes coming twice a week at you. So right now I want to, uh, encourage you guys. I'm starting a thing called a seven day challenge. So I realized that when I was doing courses or going to seminars that there was, so many things to try to learn at once, so many things to try to implement that what happens is we just end up consciously knowing it or we get overwhelmed and we shut down and we don't put them into our lives. So my goal is to create this seven day challenge, which in seven days, we're going to focus on one very specific area of your life. You're going to get it mastered. You're going to create a new identity around it and it's going to become part of you. So a couple that are coming up, we're going to have a Reiki seven day challenge. Um, we're going to have one based on dieting and fasting, one on breath work. Uh, I talked to a friend of mine, Harry, yesterday. We're going to do one on heart math, heart coherence. Uh, so just the idea that in seven days, you're going to learn a topic. You're going to master that part of your life. Uh, I'm going to definitely do one on confidence, how to be confident in seven days. And uh, the idea is that you'll, you'll focus on it, you'll make it part of your life, and you'll never be the same afterwards. So that's coming up. I hope you guys are excited for that. But today... Let's get into our perceptual filters because there's a lot to cover here. So I'm going to tell, uh, explain what they are um, in a series of kind of stories and metaphors. I think that's probably the best way and we'll go over a little bit about how they get there. So first of all, there is so much going on around us, so many details, so, many, uh, so much information, bits of information, you know, what's moving, what colors, the sounds, the, everything that we touch that we can't consciously notice all of it. Our conscious brain power is so small compared to our subconscious. We process, I think, 50 million bits of information per second in our subconscious. So in order uh, for us to be able to consciously function, our subconscious only gives us the information that we need. So it filters everything out and it does what we call generalize, delete, and distort. So it takes all that information, says, okay, this is important, this is what we need to survive, and it gives that to your conscious awareness. So if I told you to think about how your sock feels on your left foot, you weren't thinking about that until I told you to. Then your focus shifts, and now you're focusing on it. Now, you're, now you can feel what it feels like, right? It's uh, Mike Mandela, who I just had on the podcast. He talks about it like going up into the attic of your house, and it's dark up there. And all you have is this flashlight that lights up a small section. So everything that's going on in your brain is the attic. And that flashlight can illuminate part of that. So that shows you the one part. So wherever you focus becomes illuminated to you. And you generalize, delete, and distort everything else. So think about it like this. Think about um, if there's an elephant and there's, there's a, a couple people that are perceiving this elephant. You know, maybe one person is deaf and they can only see the elephant or, or see and touch, but they don't hear the sounds of the elephant, right? So they have one perception of the elephant. Now there's a blind man and he can hear the elephant, right? He can, you know, hear the trumpet and he can feel the elephant, 
but he can't see it. So he has one perception because the elephant's so big that he, he can't get his arms around the whole thing. He's not going to be able to touch every square inch of this elephant to perceive it appropriately. So he has a limited perception, right? And then there's a man who can see it in here, but he can't touch it. And so his perception of that elephant is going to be limited by what he can see, right? By the angle even that he's at. If he's under the elephant, if he's above the elephant, if it's a picture of an elephant, we're all, they're all going to have a slightly different perception of that elephant. And this is how we all come at our lives. Remember, everyone has the same experience, but we all perceive it and make meaning out of it differently. So when we come up to the, a similar situation as someone else, we, it's almost like we have a totally different understanding, a totally different experience. It's like being at a party. Everyone at a party has a different, is at a different party. They have a different perception and different experience at that party. One girl at the party whose boyfriend just broke up with her is having a terrible time. And another person who just made a love connection is having a great time. Well, the way that you perceive the world is going to be based on where you are at that time, if that makes sense. So then we tend to, so if that girl got broken up with, she's going to tend to generalize, delete, and distort everything else at that party to meet her story that it's a terrible party. And the guy that had a great time at the party who made that love connection, he's going to generalize, delete, and distort everything about that party to, to, to confirm his viewpoint that it was an amazing party. And so this is what we do because we can't perceive everything with our senses. We generalize, delete, and distort. So we can make a snap judgment about something. So we say, oh, that party, yeah, it was good or it was bad. But, but there were so many things that were good and so many things that were bad that happened at this party, but we're just cutting out all that information. And so this ties into the NLP concept of uh, the meta model or the meta pattern, how we generalize, delete, and distort and make stories of situations in our life that until we get in there and really examine what happened, sometimes it doesn't serve us. So that's a whole other topic. So one of the reasons that I start that I'm starting my seven day challenge is because my friend Chris and I were focusing on this idea. We did seven days totally focused on how people generalize, delete, and distort in their life. So I was talking to a guy, uh, I was on TV and the guy contacted me after being on TV and he needed some help. And he said, you know, my life, it just feels like I keep digging deeper and deeper. So he's generalizing, deleting, and distorting everything that's going on in it into his life into this metaphor of him digging deeper. So there's all these good things, but he just totally deleted them in order to have this feeling that he's digging deeper and deeper. And so I asked him to shed some light on what he's generalizing, deleting, and distorting. And I said, oh, what are you using to dig? And he said, well, a shovel. It didn't even miss a beat. And I said, well, what's the shovel like? He said, well, it's got a wooden handle and a, a metal blade. And, and he started describing this made up situation, right? Like he totally generalized, deleted and distorted everything to make it this feeling in his body. And then later he said, well, it's like at some point in my life, the light bulb went out. Like he was happy. And then this light bulb went out and, and that's how he generalized, deleted and distorted his life into this metaphor of a light bulb. And I said, well, just flip the switch back on. And he said, well, I can't, I tried that, but the light bulb isn't out. <laughs> the light bulb went out. And how ridiculous it sounds that this is the metaphor of his life, but we all do this. We all take a situation. So I'm a real estate investor. And when I think about real estate, I generalize, delete, and distort my years of experience into this feeling, right? I can't think about every single deal I've done, every book that I've read, but I can, my subconscious distills that into a feeling. I generalize, delete, and distort all of my experience into a feeling. When I tell you to think about your mom, right? You generalize, delete, and distort. Now I can tell you, think about a time that you like were really grateful for your mom. Like you were really connected. You had a great time, right? And I'm shifting that flashlight in your attic. So you're perceiving your mom differently. So we can use our language to it expand on that generalize, delete, and distort. All right, so here's what causes. So these are our perceptual filters, and these are built by our life experiences. These are built by the state that we're in at the time, um, and basically our subconscious programs and beliefs. Our subconscious programs and beliefs are about what's, uh, what's dangerous, what we need to focus on, what's important, right? So those, our whole value structure in our subconscious creates 
our perceptual filters. And some of these are even inherited, right? I mean, everyone has a, a different inheritance and information is passed down genetically. And so we all have different perceptual filters. Now, one thing to remember is that everyone is experiencing the same thing differently. So this is where having compassion, we're going to talk about this in a little bit, uh, about how to build rapport with someone who's got different perceptual filters than you. So these filters um, are caused by, you know, the, the main two ways that we have programmed are extreme emotional events, whatever happens in a heightened emotional state creates a, a value, a belief in your subconscious and whatever happens repeatedly. So if your parents told you money doesn't grow on trees, it's not, it's hard to make money. Uh, those real estate investors out there, you know that a lot of times realtors or people trying to break into the business will say there's no good deals. There's no deals anywhere. And if you hear that enough, your perceptual filters will begin to generalize, delete and distort and remove any good deals. So you can look at a good deal, but you won't perceive it as a good deal because that's how your perceptual filters are tuned. I remember when I started real estate investing, um, everyone said there's no good deals, right? And it was really at the bottom of, uh, towards the bottom of the, the last crash a couple years after that. And, you know, realtors and investors, certain ones would say there's no good deals, but then I'd watch other people who were just crushing it, doing dozens of deals a month, you know, and I'm like, what's the difference in these two groups? And the only difference is their beliefs about whether or not there were good deals out there because those beliefs created their filters. So two people could look at the same deal and one of them would say, oh, that's not a good deal. That's not going to work. And another person would find a way to make that deal work, would make money on that deal right? Be only because of the one thing, the only difference is how they perceive it, how they generalize, delete, and distort. So you have to be very conscious of the beliefs that are running your life, the beliefs that are creating what you're filtering out and what you're perceiving and how you're perceiving it. All right, I'm kind of on a rant here. Um, yeah, so we'll go over a couple more examples. So how this helps us, a lot of times we just go into automatic action and we don't have to think about it. So think about when we brush our teeth. I can tell you, go brush your teeth. You can generalize, delete, and distort all of the steps. I don't have to say, take your toothpaste out, grab your toothbrush in your right hand, squeeze the tube just enough to get this much toothpaste, right? I just say, go brush your teeth, and you know, you generalize, delete, and distort all of the steps that go into it. You've been trained in a way. And, and that's great because we can think, okay, brush my teeth, and I can plan my day tomorrow. I can think about an interaction and how I would change it. I can, you know, do all kinds of things while I'm brushing my teeth because my conscious power isn't taken up by that. This is how I can talk right now without having to think about every word before I say it. I know I have an intention about what I want to communicate. My subconscious takes over. So that's what's great about generalized delete and distort is it saves our conscious brain power. But what's wrong with it is that we can really seriously distort what happens. We can hear things that aren't there. We can see things that aren't there. We can really shift reality to meet our beliefs and, and our perceptual filters. So this can be incredibly dangerous, you know, especially like think about business. Like I just talked about in real estate, we can filter out those good deals if we don't believe that they're there. So that's just one example. Now, another example, <laughs> this is one of a very controversial topic, but let's talk about vaccines. So people have a, a bias about whether vaccines are good or whether they're bad, right? And, and people are always confirming their bias. This is the problem with people using the term quote unquote science. If someone is making an argument that vaccines are good or, or bad, either one, and they're just saying, well, what, you don't believe in science? They're an idiot. <laughs> because the word science doesn't mean anything at all. People that are doing science have confirmation biases. They're perceiving the world in a certain way. They're setting up their experiments. They're finding data that is always confirming their bias. It's the same with economics. We'll, we'll get there in a minute. But uh, with these vaccine tests, if I believe, or let's say I'm a pharmaceutical company, I can set up the research. I can find the data that's gonna confirm my bias, that's gonna confirm what I believe. And if there's data that's contrary, most of the time I will generalize, delete, and distort to show that it doesn't work. Now, 
Remember, neither one is right. Neither group is really perceiving reality. They're only perceiving their subconscious programs. So for example, um, in the vaccines, we forget that polio has pretty much been eliminated because of vaccines. We also, and the, on, on the other side, we don't take into account like how many vaccines we're taking now, uh, the damages that can be done, like is it natural to put these things into our body? Like it really makes sense that, there's, that we should question that. And I'm not saying we're right, you know, we're right or wrong, but the truth is probably somewhere in the middle. But because people are always confirming their bias, they're always deleting and distorting all the rest of the information, it's so hard for us to come to an agreement and everyone just butts heads. We don't remember that none of us are actually perceiving reality. So vaccines is a good one. And again, science and data can be totally skewed. So in economics, they call it the dismal science. Well, it's not any more dismal than regular science because bias always shows up. If I wanted to go find data that confirmed that raising the minimum wage was good for workers, was good for an economy, I could go find that data. If I wanted to find data that it, it, people ship jobs overseas, they automated, that the low uh, wage earners were really not any better off, I could go find that data as well because we can shift our perceptions to meet our subconscious programs. So remember, that person that has a totally different agreement than you, it's almost like they were at the same party, but they had a different experience of that party, like I talked about earlier. And so none of it is the truth. We're all seeking the truth, but you can't find the truth unless you have an open mind. And I go into every exchange knowing that my perceptual filters, the way that I perceive the situation and the way that I perceive reality is incorrect. So I'm always trying to find what is correct knowing that I'm probably never going to get there, if that makes sense. I'm never going to be able to, to perceive everything. I'm always going to generalize, delete, and distort, but I'm always seeking the truth. Okay, uh, another example of how our perceptual filters affect us is firearms. So, you know, gun safety and gun laws in this country, each group generalizes, deletes, and distorts. So someone that uh, can say, well, how can you support assault weapons because look at all the people that have died. Look at these people in the shootings. Look at how many kids get killed every year. Uh, people do not need to own these. And that's their, remember, that's not the truth. That's their perception. And there is some truth in it. But then if you go to the other side of the argument, people that believe it, that the people should own guns and that guns are the only balance of power to prevent the government from doing things like they did in China with Mao under Stalin where tens of millions of people died right? Hitler took the guns from the Jews. So they, and, and they're generalizing, deleting, and distorting their history, their experience, their values of their parents to perceive that we have to have, um, we have to own guns, right? And maybe neither group is right. We're all uh, perceiving things differently. We're deleting all this information to confirm our story. Okay. So I think that covers a couple different examples uh, so what do we do? How do we use this information and really change our lives, make our lives better? Well, a few things. One is most of you probably didn't even know that you do this. So just being aware that when, you know, somebody calls and says, Hey, I'm, I have to cancel on you. Uh, we'll generalize, delete and distort that experience and we'll feel an emotion. So knowing that those emotions that are you're creating are based on how you perceive things. So you're generalizing, deleting, and distorting information to make a meaning to give you an emotion. So if you're getting depressed all the time, it's, the reality is that your life isn't depressing. The reality is that you're perceiving it that way and making a meaning of it. So when you notice that, you can start to take control of your life. If you get angry all the time, you can notice that it's just how you're perceiving reality. It's the story you're telling yourself. It's not actual reality that's making you angry it's your meaning and your perception and you've probably generalized deleted and distorted a bunch of amazing information and you've only kept the information that's making you angry so just having awareness that everything that we do is based on generalized delete and distort and these perceptual filters the next one uh is being present if you're really present in the moment you can have more awareness. You can start to see the stories that other people tell. 
And, you know, I talk a lot about my antenna theory of emotions, which ties in perfectly with this because uh, it's like watching CNN and watching Fox news reporting on the same exact, uh, news item, right? Like totally different perceptions, totally different stories. And we do that in our lives, but when you're present to it, when you're just noticing without judgment, uh, the, the meaning that you're making and you, you try to find what happened within those stories and not the meaning that Fox News and CNN or your subconscious mind gives you, you can start to distill some truth. Uh, in the Landmark series, I took a, the Landmark forum and they talk about uh, your meaning maker and they, they you know, bring up some traumatic things from people's lives and they say, okay, well, what happened? Well, my mom abandoned me. Okay, well, that's the meaning that you gave it, but what actually happened? And you just find out when you take the meaning out of it, you can find out the exact events that happened. And that's the truth, not our perceptions of the truth. Um, okay, the other thing is we can start to get into other people's stories. This is how rapport is built. Remember, if I'm for vaccines or against vaccines and I'm arguing with someone, what I want to do is I want to get into their story first. I want to really, like I talk about um, our antenna theory, we want to resonate with that person. So we want to share their story. And I know this sounds counterintuitive to be a Republican and go get into a Democrat story or to be a Democrat and go get into a Republican story, but really to share that story, to find their truth, to notice how they're perceiving the world, the history uh, of their values and beliefs that are making them see the world that way. Because it's only from being in that rapport, from only sharing perceptual filters that you can begin to shift someone. Remember, let's, let's keep, let's say we're politics. We all have common goals, right? And that's to be safe and that's to be prosperous. It's how we get there. It's how we, how our perceptions and beliefs about how we get there is why we're arguing. So to, to really uh, find commonality in that end goal, and then you can begin to shift someone's perceptions. I hope that's making sense. So um, yeah, another thing is our state affects our perceptual filter. So when you're in a bad mood, the way you perceive things is gonna be negative. And when you're in a great mood, everything is gonna be an opportunity. This is why it's so important. And I, I talked about this when I was on a, a local news segment a week ago, is that you, the emotional station that you're on at the time has a huge effect on how you perceive the world. Think about a time when you've been in a really fantastic mood uh, and somebody did something that would normally have made you mad and it was nothing, right? Because your perceptual filters just delete, generalized, deleted, and distorted that. You think this is an amazing day, something bad happens, and you can just say, oh, it doesn't fit in your story anymore, right? And so you just kind of walk past it like it's nothing because of the state that you're in. When you're in a negative, when you're in a depressing state, the way that you perceive the world is depressing. Everything is depressing. The movies that you seem to, to tune into that you resonate with are depressing. So our perceptual filters have a huge impact on the way we perceive the world, which affects the emotions that we create, which affects the actions that we take as well. Uh, so the other thing is you can use this to leverage other people. So once you get into rapport with them and you know the perceptual filters that are running their life, you can then shift their focus. So for example, uh, someone, one of my parents who shall not be named, uh, is kind of financially, um, let's say they're very risk. They don't like risk and I'm, I, I like risk so I can shift. That's my dad. I'll just say it. So my dad doesn't like financial risk and I don't mind it. And so, uh, I can shift his focus to leverage his current perceptual filters. So if I thought he should put money into something, I'll show him how safe it is. If I, if I don't think he should put money into something, I'll show him how risky it is because then his perceptual filters and his values will kick in, generalize, delete, and distort the information, and then I can lead his decision-making. So once you find someone's values, once you find the perceptual filters that are running their life, you can then shift their focus and then that, and then that creates their reality. But you have to know what programs are running their life. And, and to do that, you have to be present and you have to listen to people. Okay, I feel like I'm rambling here a little bit. Let me see if I had anything else. Um, yeah, so we tend to generalize, delete, and distort our capabilities in everything. So 
if you tried real estate investing once and you failed, you're going to make a generalized delete and distortion decision and emotion around real estate investing. When you can watch all kinds of other people do it successfully, you know, it works, you know, there's processes for it. You know, you're smart enough because there's that guy down the street does it and he's way dumber than you. Uh, but your perceptual filters, because there was emotion around you failing is then going to generalize, delete and distort to block your action forward. So being aware of that, having new emotions around it, uh, doing the subconscious programs to shift you into different perceptual filters is how you begin to move past that stuff. So, all right, this week I'm going to give you guys a challenge and I just want you to start to notice how you perceive things in the moment. What's your generalizing, deleting, and distorting? How emotions come up from that? How your actions are um, determined by your beliefs, by your state, and how that shifts what you perceive. And also just notice people around you, the stories that they tell themselves, what they're generalizing, deleting, and distorting. You know, if you guys are in a, in a bad relationship, a lot of times you, uh, you know, you show home, you come home late, 10 minutes late and your partner freaks out like it's the end of the world and you've been cheating. That's a perfect example of someone generalizing, deleting and distorting, making a story around something that's not there. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's the message today is just to be aware how our perceptual filters determine the quality of our life, the quality of our emotions, how we can begin to shape them. And again, look for patterns, right? We're humans. One of the best skills that we have, one of the uh, most important meta skills is to be able to recognize patterns. So see patterns in yourself, see patterns in others, and then you can begin to shift them and you begin to perceive the world differently. All right. So if you enjoyed this episode, I would love it if you would share it with somebody who needs to have their perceptual filters shaken up, uh, needs to change the way they see the world. And as always, I would love a review from you guys. I look forward to sharing more content with you and seeing you on the seven day challenges that are coming up. Uh, that will be at spontrained.com slash seven day challenge and more information coming out on that soon. So have an amazing day and never stop growing. Thank you.